With the growth of autonomous vehicles and the mobility market, there is intense competition in the development of high-performance, next-generation compound semiconductors. These compound semiconductors, such as SIC, silicon carbide, GaN, gallium nitride, and gallium-3 oxide, gallium oxide, may someday replace the currently used silicon-based semiconductors materials for vehicles. Compound semiconductors are semiconductors created by combining two or more elements, rather than using a single element like silicon. They offer several advantages over traditional silicon-based semiconductors, including much faster operation and significant benefits in terms of temperature, pressure, heat dissipation, and power consumption. Companies like Tesla and Toyota have already introduced vehicles equipped with compound semiconductors, and now Hyundai, BYD, Renault, BMW, and GM have followed suit by incorporating compound semiconductors into their vehicles. Firstly, SIC, silicon carbide, which is a compound formed by the combination of carbon and silicon in a one-to-one -one ratio, has been utilized to create power semiconductors that can increase the driving range of vehicles by up to 10%. Gone. Gallium nitride, similar to SIC, is known to possess comparable performance while offering significant potential cost savings. It exhibits excellent electron mobility, high breakdown voltage, and superior thermal conductivity. Additionally, SIC is known for its strength in high voltage applications, while GAN excels in high frequency operations. As a result, SIC semiconductors were researched and commercialized earlier than GAN. There was an announcement last week that SK PowerTech has commenced operations at its Busan factory for the production of SIC power semiconductors and has started mass production. There are several companies involved in SIC wafer manufacturing, such as Wolfspeed, 26, and C Crystal. In terms of Korean companies, SK has invested 120 billion Korean won in acquiring Yes Power Technics, SK PowerTech a company specializing in SIC semiconductor design and manufacturing. Additionally, SK Siltron acquired the SIC business unit of DuPont in 2020 and is currently constructing a factory in Michigan, USA. On Semi, the world's second-largest power semiconductor company, is building a factory in Buchian, while DB Hitech plans to engage in SIC production through outsourcing in Ulsan. LX Semicon will design and manufacture SIC in Changju. GAN semiconductors have a very high technological barrier, and only a few companies such as Infineon, ST Microelectronics, and TSMC have successfully commercialized GAN products. Among them, Navitas, based in the United States, is known as one of the major suppliers of GAN power semiconductors. Korean company, Sigatronics has completed the development of 100 to 605 volt range GAN, gallium nitride, electric field effect transistors and is preparing for mass production. Emosense is developing GAN, gallium nitride, power semiconductors. A pro semiconductor has successfully achieved mass production of high voltage GAN semiconductors, while RFHIC has developed and supplies GAN, gallium nitride, transistors. IV Works is producing GAN, gallium nitride, epitaxial, EPI, wafers. Epitaxy is a process of growing a thin layer on a substrate to give semiconductor materials conductivity. There are only a few companies worldwide that produce GAN EPI wafers, including Wolfspeed and Sumitomo Chemical. In addition, among major corporations, SK Siltron has entered this market in partnership with IQE from the United Kingdom while LX Semicon and DB Hitech have also made their presence in this field. Gallium oxide, considered an ultra-wide bandgap semiconductor because it has a wider bandgap compared to SIC and GAN. The bandgap refers to the minimum energy required for electrons to move within a semiconductor. A wider bandgap, or a larger energy difference, allows for operation at higher temperatures, voltages, and frequencies. Gallium oxide offers several advantages over SIC and GAN. It has a manufacturing cost that is only a quarter of SIC and GAN. It provides 3% higher power conversion efficiency, and chips can be made 30% to 50% smaller, allowing for three times more chip production from the same wafer. However, a drawback is that its electrical conductivity is lower compared to SIC and GAN. NCT Novel Crystal Technology, from Japan currently holds a monopoly on gallium oxide, and many companies in China are also actively developing it. 
In Korea, ETRI, Electronics and Telecommunications Research Institute, developed a gallium-3 oxide-based power semiconductor transistor called a MOSFET that operates at 2,300 volts in 2019. Recently, PowerCube Semi, a compound semiconductor foundry specializing in power devices, has established a dedicated fab for gallium oxide production. That's correct. Hyundai Motor Company is indeed collaborating with PowerCube Semi in the development of gallium oxide power management semiconductors. Hello everyone. Earlier, I briefly explained about compound semiconductors. Today, we are discussing the competition among companies in the field of mobility semiconductors. One of the characteristics that have emerged as vehicles transition to mobility is the increasing ambiguity in competition among companies. It has become difficult to distinguish who the competitors are. Nevertheless, there is no doubt that the company leading the mobility semiconductor market will also dominate the overall semiconductor market. Samsung Electronics is supplying memory semiconductors to major automotive companies such as Audi and BMW. Additionally, in the foundry sector, Samsung is expanding its orders for vehicle use semiconductors. Samsung Electronics has been producing chips for Tesla, starting with 14 nanometer process technology in the past. However, it has recently been reported that they are also manufacturing 5 nanometer process chips for infotainment purposes. In the previous year, Telechips, a company specializing in vehicle use semiconductors, independently developed an MCU, microcontroller unit, that was subsequently outsourced for production to Samsung Foundry. This chip was specifically designed for use in Hyundai vehicles. Intel has been strengthening its position in the automotive semiconductor market by expanding into the foundry business. They are focusing on three key areas, autonomous driving, communication and sensors, and power chips. Recently, Intel acquired the Israeli foundry company, Tower Semiconductor, for $5.4 billion. They also have plans to establish an R&D center and a foundry design center in France, as well as invest 6.2 trillion won, approximately $5.5 billion, in constructing OSAT, Outsourced Semiconductor Assembly and Test, facilities in Italy. Additionally, they are planning to invest 16.4 trillion won, approximately $14.6 billion, for expansion in Ireland. In 2020, Intel acquired MoveIt, a service-based mobility solutions company, for $900 million, as part of their mobility business. MoveIt provides a comprehensive mobility service that combines public transportation, bicycle sharing, and scooter calling services. SK Hynix received ISO 26262 certification, which is the international standard for functional safety of automotive semiconductor products, in 2021. The certified product is an 8 gigabit LPDDR5 chip, which is a high capacity, high performance, low power memory semiconductor essential for autonomous driving ADAS, advanced driver assistance systems. In the future, there are plans to expand the lineup of automotive memory products to include UFS, Universal Flash Storage, and HBM, High Bandwidth Memory. A few years ago, SK China invested $600 million in Horizon Robotics, a Chinese AI semiconductor company specializing in autonomous driving platforms. Micron Technology is ranked as the third largest memory semiconductor company, and it has achieved a significant market share of 55% in the automotive memory sector. Micron Technology recently released the industry's first low-power DDR5 DRAM, LPDDR5, and they are collaborating with Volocopter, a pioneer in urban air mobility, UAM. Infineon Technologies, based in Germany, is a company that was spun off from Siemens in 1999. They have a product portfolio consisting of four categories, automotive semiconductors, industrial power control semiconductors, power and sensor system semiconductors, and connected security system semiconductors. That's correct. NXP, headquartered in the Netherlands, was spun off from Philips in 2006. They are a leading company in the field of microcontrollers, MCUs, and hold a market share of nearly 20%, making them the top player in the industry. Renesis Electronics, based in Japan, is a company formed through the merger of Hitachi's semiconductor division, Mitsubishi Electric, and NEC's semiconductor business unit in 2003. In the field of mobility, they specialize in manufacturing low-voltage, cost-effective, 
high performance, high efficiency, and high power products used in various vehicles such as e-bikes, e-scooters, forklifts, and hybrid electric cars. ST Microelectronics is headquartered in Geneva, Switzerland, and it was formed through the merger of Italy's SGS Microelectronica and Thomson Semiconductors, the semiconductor division of Francis Thomson. They manufacture automotive semiconductors, ADOS, advanced driver assistance systems, image processors, ADOS radar solutions, automotive MCUs, microcontrollers, audio power amplifiers, and automotive SIC, silicon carbide, components. They are also developing and planning to release a new Stella MCU specifically designed for electric vehicles to reduce charging time and increase driving range. They have joined as an anchor partner for the startup Autobahn and are supporting innovation startups in the mobility sector. Texas Instruments, TI, is a leading analog semiconductor company headquartered in Dallas, and it is also ranked within the top five in automotive semiconductors. They supply semiconductors for ADOS, vehicle electronic control units, powertrain systems, infotainment, and clusters. To meet the increasing demand for automotive semiconductors, TI recently acquired LSI Corporation based in Utah for $900 million. Additionally, they have begun construction on a new 12-inch fab in Sherman, Texas, to address the growing demand in the automotive semiconductor market. NVIDIA considers its automotive business as an AI business. Hyundai Motor Company is also applying NVIDIA Drive, which provides autonomous driving capabilities, to all vehicles launched after 2022. They are supplying their Drive Orin, an SOC, system on a chip, used for ADOS and autonomous driving, to Chinese electric vehicle company BYD and US-based Lucid. Xiaopeng Motors, Xpeng, and NIO are also using Drive Orin. Drive Orin is a chip that constitutes NVIDIA's autonomous driving platform called Drive Hyperion 8. Volvo has integrated Drive Orin, and Mercedes-Benz is considering the integration of Drive Hyperion 8. Drive Hyperion 8 includes a main chip, 12 surround cameras, 9 radars, 12 ultrasonic sensors, 1 front LiDAR, and 3 interior-facing cameras. Yes, NVIDIA has unveiled an updated version called Drive Hyperion 9, targeting level 4 autonomous driving. Through this, NVIDIA aims to become a leading company in the non-Tesla autonomous driving sector. They also operate the NVIDIA Inception program, which supports mobility startups. Qualcomm is well known for its automotive integrated platform called Snapdragon Digital Chassis. They also provide the Snapdragon Ride platform for autonomous driving, Snapdragon Cockpit platform for infotainment systems, Snapdragon Auto Connectivity platform for 5G, Wi-Fi, and V2X capabilities, and Snapdragon Car to Cloud for cloud-based vehicle software updates. Based on their 5G and AI capabilities, Qualcomm has set a strategy to pioneer the market for autonomous mobile robots and maintain leadership in industries such as delivery robots and industrial drones for UAM, urban air mobility, aligning with the demand in the mobility sector. Broadcom, formerly known as Avago Technologies and based in Singapore, is a major player in the semiconductor industry, ranking third in terms of market share. In the early 2010s, Broadcom started its automotive semiconductor business by launching Ethernet products for automotive applications. One of Broadcom's strengths lies in its collaboration with Tesla. They have jointly developed high-performance computing, HPC, chips using a 7-nanometer process. These chips are being produced by TSMC and have been integrated into Tesla vehicles released in 2022. Broadcom's automotive semiconductors are used in various aspects of a car, including powertrain, ADOS, infotainment, and body control. For powertrain applications, Broadcom provides optocouplers and amplifiers that play a role in controlling and monitoring power-related functions. In ADAS systems, Broadcom's automotive semiconductors include MCUs, microcontrollers, encoders, and LEDs. MCUs are responsible for processing and controlling various ADOS features, while encoders and LEDs are used in sensor systems and lighting applications. In infotainment systems, Broadcom's automotive semiconductors encompass MCUs, sensors, and LEDs. MCUs handle the processing and control of infotainment features, while sensors contribute to various input and output functionalities. LEDs are utilized for display and lighting purposes. In the body control domain, 
Broadcom's automotive semiconductors consist of MCUs, sensors, and LEDs, similar to their application in infotainment systems. These components facilitate the control and monitoring of various body-related functions in a vehicle. AMD, Advanced Micro Devices, is primarily a company that designs CPUs and GPUs. In early 2022, they entered the automotive semiconductor market in earnest with the acquisition of Xilinx. Founded in 1984 in Silicon Valley, this company holds the top position in the FPGA, Field Programmable Gate Array, market with over 50% market share. They primarily design semiconductors used in ADOS, autonomous driving, vehicle interiors, and electrification networking. The advantage of Xilinx chips is that they allow customers to upgrade both hardware and software according to their needs. In relation to mobility, in 2021, Xilinx released Versal AI Edge, a 7 nanometers process AI semiconductor used in autonomous driving and robotics applications. To target the mobility sector, they also ventured into robotics and released the Kriya Robotics Starter Kit, known as the Kriya Platform. MediaTek is a Taiwan-based fabless semiconductor company that was established in 1997 as a spin-off from UMC. It holds the top position in the application processor, AP, market in terms of shipment volume. They have made capital investments in a self-driving startup called AutoX, also known as the Chinese version of Waymo. AutoX plans to operate fully autonomous robotaxis in cities. In addition, MediaTek entered the automotive semiconductor market in 2017 and currently provides solutions in four areas, ADOS, millimeter wave radar, infotainment, and telematics for automotive manufacturers. MediaTek initially released the MT2731, a vehicle semiconductor that utilizes ARM cores. It is known for its low-cost, high-performance telematics control unit functionality. MediaTek became the first company in the world to obtain AEC Q100 Grade 3 certification, which guarantees performance at temperatures up to 125 degrees Celsius. This year, they plan to release chips with built-in Wi-Fi 7. Wi-Fi 7 offers not only faster data transmission speeds but also shorter latency times, providing an advantage. Recently, MediaTek formed a partnership to utilize Intel Foundry's advanced process technology. While TSMC was previously MediaTek's largest customer, they decided to adopt a strategy using a double-vendor approach to address uncertainties and diversify their supply chain. Foundry companies are divided into those that produce mature process semiconductors using 8-inch and 12-inch wafers and those that produce advanced semiconductors using EUV, extreme ultraviolet, lithography. TSMC, Samsung Electronics, Intel, and others are representative companies in the field of EUV lithography. Vehicle semiconductor production primarily utilizes 8-inch wafers, but with the increase in electric vehicles and autonomous driving vehicles, there is a growing trend of producing vehicle semiconductors using 12-inch wafers. TSMC is the leading semiconductor foundry company and they specialize in manufacturing MCUs, microcontroller units, for major customers such as Infineon, NXP, ST Microelectronics, and others. They also receive over 90% of the orders for high-performance vehicle semiconductors using EUV, extreme ultraviolet, lithography, including from companies like NVIDIA and Qualcomm. TSMC produces approximately 70% of the global vehicle semiconductors. As mentioned earlier, they are constructing semiconductor fabs in Nanjing, China, Kumamoto, Japan, and Arizona, USA. They also have plans to build fabs in Dresden, Germany, and Singapore. They have collaborative relationships with companies like Toyota and GM, and it is anticipated that they will also produce AI semiconductors for future Apple cars, which will be used for autonomous driving. UMC, United Microelectronics Corporation, is a semiconductor foundry company based in Taiwan. They manufacture image sensors, power semiconductors, DDI, display driver IC, MCUs, and other products in their 200mm 8-inch fabs. They have plans to complete the construction of a fab in Singapore by the end of 2024, and they are also building a 28 nanometers fab in Tainan, Taiwan. Samsung Electronics has entrusted UMC with the production of older generation semiconductors, and they have also invested in the Tainan fab. 
This fab will utilize 8-inch wafers and a 28 nanometers process to manufacture power semiconductors, display driver chips, image sensors, and other components. Global Foundries is a company that was spun off from the manufacturing division of AMD, a U.S.-based company. It competes with UMC in the market. They produce various chips and MCUs for ADOS. They are establishing or expanding fabs in the United States, Germany, and Singapore. Additionally, in collaboration with ST Microelectronics, they have decided to construct a 12-inch fab in the Crolls area of France. Having a process stuck at 10 nanometers is considered a disadvantage. However, Global Foundries has managed to secure a substantial customer base including companies like Ford, BMW, Bosch, Volkswagen, NXP, and Infineon. Thanks to these strong customer relationships, they have already secured four years' worth of order volumes. SMIC, Semiconductor Manufacturing International Corporation, is the largest semiconductor foundry company in China but it has faced sanctions from the United States. It is a company that President Xi Jinping has placed national importance on and the largest shareholder is a state-owned entity. China has thousands of fab-less companies, so its growth is primarily driven by a strong domestic market rather than exports. SMIC is currently constructing an $8.87 billion fab in Shanghai as a joint venture. It has recently achieved success in the development of a 7 nanometer process. It has been reported that SMIC has succeeded in developing a 7 nanometer process, and there is also news that they are working on the development of 5 nanometer and 3 nanometer processes. DB Hitech specializes in manufacturing over 20 types of semiconductor chips for power motor driven infotainment systems, covering areas such as system power connectivity, battery management, engine control, vehicle dynamics, and safety. They are also developing SIC and GAN semiconductor process technologies. LX Semicon is the leading domestic fabless semiconductor company in South Korea, ranking around 20th globally. To reduce business risks associated with excessive dependence on display driver IC, DDI, they have entered the automotive semiconductor market. They are developing SIC, power, MCU, display, and battery management system semiconductors. In 2021, they signed a development agreement with MS for 3D flight time distance measurement sensing systems. Recently, they acquired a stake in Telechips, a leading automotive semiconductor design company, becoming a major shareholder. They are also considering the acquisition of Magnachip, a semiconductor design company. Jeju Semiconductor is a fabless semiconductor company specializing in memory semiconductors. Approximately 80% of its employees are engineers. In the fabless memory sector, it ranks fourth after ESMT and ISSI in Taiwan and Giga Device in China. Jeju Semiconductor plans to focus on the growth of automotive semiconductors, aiming to increase their share to over 50% of total revenue. They have already supplied memory components for Audi vehicles. They develop various products such as MCP, multi-chip package, DRAM, and NAND flash, and also provide packaging and testing solutions as part of their post-processing services. Jeju Semiconductor's automotive memory is used in various applications related to vehicle-to-everything, V2X, communication, such as the emergency call system, e-call, and roadside units, RSU. They have also recently embarked on the development of next-generation, high-reliability intelligent memory semiconductors known as Processor in Memory, PIM. These chips are fusion semiconductors that perform computations within the memory itself, enhancing overall efficiency and performance. Telechips is a fabless company, and over 95% of its revenue comes from automotive semiconductors. They specialize in designing application processors, AP, for automotive infotainment systems and ADOS. While they may lag behind companies like Qualcomm and MediaTek by a generation or so, Telechips is considered one of the most advanced domestic companies in the field in Korea. They have customers such as Hyundai Motor Company, Jong'an Motors in China, and European automotive manufacturers. Additionally, they have successfully developed MCUs and entrusted their production to Samsung Foundry. Telechips is developing a vision processor prototype called N-Dolphin, which incorporates an NPU, neural processing unit. 
This chip utilizes deep learning for processing camera data in ADOS applications and is intended to be integrated into autonomous vehicles. Above Semiconductor, which became independent from Magna chip in 2006, excels in MCU, microcontroller unit, design. In 2021, they ventured into the field of automotive MCUs and developed MCUs for LiDAR applications. They are also expanding their product range to include MCUs for ADOS, parking assist systems, PAW, and MCU for mobile device charging. There is a growing possibility that they will supply their products to Hyundai Motor Company in the near future. In 2018, Above Semiconductor established a vehicle battery specialist company called Auto Silicon through joint investment with Telechips. Auto Silicon, in partnership with SK On, developed the Battery Monitoring Integrated Circuit, BMIC, that was previously imported in full. IA is a total solution company for vehicle semiconductors. As the first fabless company, it commercialized vehicle MCUs in 2016. In 2010, Chairman Kim Dong-jin, former vice chairman of Hyundai Motor and Hyundai Mobis, took office as the representative and changed the existing communication module business to vehicle module and semiconductor business. IA is a group consisting of three companies, Trino Technology, Autosoft, and IA Powertron. Trino Technology is responsible for designing, developing, manufacturing, and selling power semiconductors, while Autosoft is responsible for developing and verifying semiconductor software. IA Powertron is responsible for the module area. Although IA mainly deals with power semiconductors, Trino Technology developed SIC semiconductors a few years ago and will start mass production in 2024. KEC is a comprehensive semiconductor company with a history of over 50 years. It mainly produces power semiconductors and has customers such as Tesla, Hyundai Motor, and GM. It supplies semiconductors for powertrain, chassis, and infotainment. Since 2017, it has developed and successfully mass-produced SIC semiconductors with trench structure, which only two global companies have entered into mass production. Recently, it has been delivering its products to customers. Since 2021, it has been supplying semiconductors to the Tesla Digital Cockpit Touchscreen, and it has also started supplying gate driver ICs to BYD, the top electric vehicle maker in China. In the mobility market, it is unclear whether IT companies or existing automakers have an advantage. Hyundai Motor Group's Hyundai Mobis has focused on developing relatively low-tech power semiconductors and set a goal to localize MCUs. They also plan to develop system semiconductors that control sensors and driving devices, SOC that goes into ADOS and infotainment systems. They plan to develop AI semiconductors required for autonomous driving with specialized semiconductor companies. As mentioned earlier, Hyundai has developed gallium oxide power semiconductors for mass production with power semiconductor company PowerCube Semi. That's correct. Toyota Motor Corporation is sourcing semiconductors through its subsidiary, Denso. In 2017, Denso established NCTEX to develop semiconductors required for autonomous driving, and in 2020, Toyota established a company called Mirai with Denso to design semiconductors together. Mirai develops sensing and SOC, including power electronics. Last year, Denso developed power semiconductors for electric vehicles, but high-performance semiconductors that cannot be produced in-house are likely to be outsourced to TSMC or UMC. In 2021, Ford partnered with Global Foundries to jointly develop semiconductors for autonomous driving, data communication, and battery management. Ford is preparing to produce vehicle semiconductors using Intel's 10 nanometer or lower process, which could be a new opportunity for Ford's autonomous vehicles. That's correct. GM has signed a strategic partnership for vehicle semiconductor design with seven companies, including NXP, Qualcomm, ST Micro, and Renesis, with a focus on developing MCUs. Stellantis, a merger of Italy and US based joint venture Fiat Chrysler Automobiles and Francis PSA Group, signed a joint development partnership for vehicle semiconductors with Honghai Technology Group, the parent company of Foxconn, in Taiwan in 2021. They are developing four types of semiconductors with the aim of incorporating them into cars produced from next year, and have also established a semiconductor joint venture. Yes, you are right.
Big tech companies such as Google, Apple, Meta, Microsoft, Amazon, Baidu, Alibaba, and Tesla are all competing to develop semiconductors. In fact, there is hardly a big tech company that is not developing semiconductors these days. A few years ago, Apple released the M1 chip, which stimulated other companies. The M1 chip received praise for its battery efficiency, multitasking, and graphics processing, surpassing Intel CPUs. Apple also introduced the M2 chip, which has improved performance. Currently, Apple is developing the C1 chip which will use GaN material and is expected to include eye tracking technology, NPUs, CPUs, and GPUs. It was recently reported that Apple has requested a Korean parts company to develop a DCU, domain control unit, in the autonomous driving sensor field. The DCU will manage integrated battlefield cameras, radar, lidar, and other sensors. Since 2014, Apple has been working on a self-driving development project called Titan, and plans to release the Apple Car in 2025. Similar to Tesla, Apple plans to release Level 3 cars with a centralized operating system that controls all functions. Google used to use Qualcomm's Snapdragon for its smartphone application processors, but has since developed its own tensor processing units, TPUs. Google announced its self-driving car development plan as early as 2009 and is developing the Google Car through its affiliate Waymo. It appears that chip production will be carried out using Samsung Foundry's EUV process. Tesla released its self-driving chip in 2019 and unveiled the D1 chip made with a 7 nanometers process in 2021. They plan to produce chips using a 5 nanometers process at Samsung Foundry. Baidu established a joint venture called Jidu Auto with Chinese carmaker Gilyi in 2021 to produce electric cars. Baidu, which is at the forefront of autonomous driving technology development, unveiled the Apollo RT6, a level 4 autonomous taxi in 2021. That's correct. Baidu independently developed its AI chip called Kunlun, with Kunlun 2 being produced by Samsung Foundry. In 2021, Baidu spun off its semiconductor business under the name Kunlun Chip Technology. Baidu also developed a voice semiconductor called Honghu and was the first in the world to install the Qualcomm 8295 chip made with a 5 nanometers process in its own vehicles. Alibaba's self-driving logistics robot, Xiaomen LV, is equipped with Level 4 autonomous driving technology. Alibaba developed its own AI chip for autonomous driving. In 2018, it acquired FPGA company C-Sky Microsystems and established a semiconductor subsidiary called Pingtuj. In 2019, Pingtuj developed the Shen Tegu 910 core processor. In 2021, Alibaba also developed a 3D IMC, in-memory computing, chip. Although big tech companies are developing their own semiconductors, it appears that they will not build foundries, as it costs about 15 trillion won to build just one fab. Although we don't know exactly when it will happen, autonomous driving is advancing towards level 5, and semiconductor technology is reaching 3 nanometers, with the potential to reach 2 nanometers in the future. The proportion of AI chips is also increasing. Once level 5 is realized, it is expected that more than 20,000 semiconductors will be used per mobility unit. The mobility industry is expected to grow more than three times larger than the automotive industry. In particular, the demand for existing memory semiconductors is expected to increase rapidly. This is because memory semiconductors are at the core of the digital transformation taking place in the automotive industry. Indeed, there are many issues to be addressed in addition to the technology itself in order to realize level 5 autonomous driving. Firstly, infrastructure such as suitable roads and mobile networks for autonomous driving must be established, which will likely require significant investment. Secondly, measures to support the livelihoods of drivers, including taxi drivers and other driving professionals, will also be necessary. Thirdly, adjustments to laws and regulations, such as those governing car management, road traffic, and national compensation, will also be needed. This includes resolving ethical dilemmas such as who autonomous vehicles should prioritize between the driver and pedestrians. In addition, measures such as establishing a liability system for security and data accidents will also be necessary. That's it for today's video. Thank you so much for watching even though the content was a bit boring. 
Don't forget to subscribe and hit the like button. See you in the next video.